Hey everybody, today's topic is sunlight and we're going to talk about sunlight and the importance of sunlight and the sun uh, and the rays of the sun as an actual nutrient. You know, we've come to, as, as we have with a lot of other things, demonize the sun to some extent. You know, we try to avoid the sun as much as possible. We lather up and try to protect ourselves from the sun. You know, we constantly hear that and there's another, yet another multi-billion dollar industry called sun care. Um, helping us to prevent exposure to the sun. And uh, it, it's, it's gotten to a point where it's becoming more and more embedded in our mindset that the sun is this dangerous thing that we need to protect ourselves from. Which when you zoom out and think about the sun uh, and, and the fact that every ancient civilization not only appreciated and knew about the benefits and the hygienic benefits of the sun, but actually worshiped the sun as the provider for all life on earth as we know it, and especially for all of the things that we need to be eating and uh, for all the things that are necessary for our lives. You know, we need sunlight. The Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Romans, they had, um, they, they incorporated sun bathing. You know, the exposure to the sun was vital and they actually had dedicated places Places for people to bathe, bathe in the sun, to soak the sun. These are terms that we hear that, that are part of our vernacular. Uh, and they're there for a reason because throughout our lives, how could we not appreciate the fact that, that the sun, the provider of, of, of all life, um, it, it, and to be grateful for the rising of the sun uh, was such a powerful um, part of ancient paganism and whatnot, and, and it's a big part of our lives. You know, uh, our body functions with the rise and fall of the sun. Um, you know, you look at photosynthesis, which we all learned as a kids, uh, as a necessary, you know, part of our education. And, and uh, but, but think about this for a second. What happens in photosynthesis is that, you know, you combine carbon dioxide and water with the rays, the sunlight, to create what? What do these plants create with it? They create A, carbohydrates in the form of, of glucose and starch, which is the body's, our body's preferred fuel, um, carbs, uh, especially carbs, uh, ideally carbs from plants, and oxygen, which we need to breathe. And this all can't be made possible by the plants without the sun. So the sun is the true um, uh, important ingredient, uh, one of the most important ingredients for life on earth. So what I want to get to is, is, you know, talking about the importance of this nutrients. We need it. We need it. And, uh, think about your, your, how, how brighter our moods are when the sun is out and how, how down we can, we tend to get when we get, especially here in the Northeast, when we're starting to get into that time period where the days are getting shorter, the sun's not as, as, as warming and whatnot. And, um, you know, it's, it's for many people, uh, a challenging time, you know, um, the seasonal affective disorder is real. It's a real form of depression, sometimes mild, sometimes severe triggered by lack of exposure to the sun. You know, studies were done on people in hospital rooms with windows versus those who didn't have windows. And the people that had windows and exposure to daylight and sunlight actually recovered faster. I'll, I'll include that um, uh, when this when this live uh, little bit on sunlight is over. Um, so, and we've all experienced this ourselves, the, the, how we raise our heads and just feel the glow of the sun and we close our eyes and we still feel that brightness. This is the provider of life for us. And um, to demonize it and, and to deny ourselves yet another important nutrient is very dangerous. And here's why, from a physiological standpoint, sunlight, uh, we have a chemical underneath our skin called ergosterol. When, when this is, is, is exposed to the ultraviolet rays of the sun, it's converted into vitamin D. So the sunlight, vitamin D doesn't travel through the rays of the sun. It's converted by our bodies when exposed to, vita, to, to, uh, to sunlight. That's why it's so important that we do get direct exposure to the sun. Vitamin D is an incredibly important vitamin for every physiological function in our body. One of the most important uh, functions is the absorbability and the use of for calcium. Vitamin D is very important. It plays a very important role. Um, other benefits of sunlight, especially for the elderly. Now, the elderly need sunlight. They, they tend to um, really, really... Um, 
suffer from a lack of exposure to sun. The sun benefits of the sun can help us in so many ways. Uh, it, it, it's it's been linked more and more to longevity, uh, loss of weight, um, eye, better eyesight, um, lower risk of stroke. You know, and in, and again in general, we're happier when we're in the sun. You know, fun in the sun. Um, so. The problem with the sun is, and now what we, the issue is not, is the sun bad or good? I mean, I think it's obvious that we need the sun. Um, the issue is, are we bathing in sunlight or, or are we overexposing ourselves to sun? Are we getting sunlight in a practical way? And, and, and you know, look, if we're out in the, in the height of the day on the equator, we're gonna get burned. We're gonna, it's going to be harmful. Um, we need to be practical. We need to be smart about our exposure. So we want to talk about that a little bit. Like, A, how much exposure do we need? And if we live in climates where we're not getting a lot, what do we do about that? Um, so let's talk about that. And and there's no exact science on this, but we don't need a ton of exposure to the sun to get the proper amounts of, of nutrients from the sun's light and, and for the vitamin D production that is necessary for our bodies. Um, it's estimated just 45 minutes a week for, for those who are fair skinned and, and maybe up to three hours a week for those who are of a darker skin complexion. Um, that's not actually a lot. Now, how do we now? How do we get that sun exposure? Yes, we all want that nice dark, deep tan and whatever in the summer, but that's where it becomes problematic. Think about what we're doing, right? We're getting out in the sunlight, and in, in the hottest part of the day, we're lathering up with lotions and oils that are a not regulated. We don't know what chemicals are in them. There are lots of chemicals in them. They're getting absorbed by the body. We're blocking out the usefulness and the potential that we need from the vitamin D, right, and and from the light's rays. And we're putting all these other chemicals in our bodies. Uh, again, we don't know what's in them. We can't pronounce them. Look at the labels on some of these these sunblocks and lotions and tanning oils and stuff. They're they're not healthy for us. They're not good for us. So yet we're exposing ourselves in the hottest part of the day with all the, with all of this lathered stuff on it. These toxic lotions on us. And what are we really trying to achieve here? The better way to do it is in, in, in exposing ourselves in the brightest part of the day is okay, but we just can't do it for a long period of time. You know, 10 minutes out in the peak sun and the peak part of summer is okay. We'll get a lot of vitamin D. We'll get it, especially if we've exposed as much of our body as possible. We want that. We, we need that. Um, otherwise, you know, early in the morning and, and, and more in the afternoon when the sun is not so bright and, and strong and getting out there and, and again, exposing as much of our skin as possible to the rays of the sun is incredibly healthy. When we're really hot and when we're out in the thick of it, look at if you've ever traveled to, to some of the hotter parts of the world, especially the Caribbean, you know, you see that these guys down there, the locals, like they're, they're, they're covered. They've got long sleeve white shirts on. They've got hats on. They are smart enough to know that like even those who are, live in those climates, like they need to protect themselves from the rays of the sun in the peak parts of the day. And they do it. You know, we're the ones out there lathered up woo -hoo, and, and, you know, ultimately rubbing like tons of aloe on us and, you know, barely can move and we're sunburned because we're just not being sensible about it. We just, have, you know, to be honest, like we have to be smart. The sun is an incredibly powerful, powerful thing. Uh, and we need to honor that and respect that as a part of our own self-care. You know, we don't need this sun care um, purveyors of toxic lotions and all this other crap and garbage to put on our skin. You know, our skin absorbs what's put on it within within 30 seconds. It gets absorbed. I mean, we need to really be careful and, and monitor this. It's not the, I don't believe, I believe it's not the sun that we need to be f fearing. It's these chemicals and lotion that are in these lotions and stuff that we're putting on our body and applying multiple times a day at the beach. Um, covering up, sitting under an umbrella, sitting in the shade, and, and avoiding that peak sun uh, and exposing ourselves to, 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 to when it's not so strong is, is more practical. And we'll get all the benefits from the sunlight uh, without the potential danger of, of getting sunburn. So, you know, that's the, you know, we really want to drive that home. Can't, how can we deny ourselves um, the beauty and warmth of the sun? Uh, to me, it's just crazy. Now, let's talk about vitamin D again. And uh, for those of us who live in temporal clim temperate climates like myself up in the Northeast, you know, I take a, a good vitamin D supplement. Um, and I'll, and I'll, I'll share with you guys the one I use. It's actually um, very high quality and uh, I need it. I, I need to take it because I just can't get enough sun, especially in the winter. It's not 
bright enough and even when it is it's freezing cold the sun's not as strong i take the supplement uh we can't mess around with vitamin d you know it, it, we absolutely need it and supplementation which you know we've spent i think 40 billion dollars in supplements in this country but i will say most of which are are, are not only uh, not beneficial uh, they're actually harmful however a good vitamin d a good vitamin b um is very very uh, important and if we're eating a standard american diet you know we will probably want a good multivitamin as well but i don't want to digress too much let's stay on sunlight vitamin d supplementation i do it i need it um you know a lot of these vi uh, vitamins that are out there you got to be careful because um in this fortifying things with vitamin d you know we're not getting vitamin d in, in, a, in a truly absorbable form you know when we when we're adding it the same thing with ascorbic acid which is vitamin c you know when in these products where the the water is taken out and reduced to concentrate and pasteurized which means heated and all this other stuff it all gets um, the integrity of the food um, gets compromised so and that's why they have to add it back in and that's not really the same you know you can't really put Humpty Dumpty back together again the the intercellular and the interrelationships within a food are designed specifically by nature, by evolution over thousands and thousands or millions of years to be that way. We can't think that in some kind of lab we can take things out and put them back in and it's all gonna be fine and well. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so we wanna get all the vitamins we can from our natural food. I'll put in some good sources for vitamin D naturally, but again, um, you know, the supplementation is important. And enjoy the sun, you know. Um, get out there in the sun. Expose your body to the sun. Just don't do it when you know you're going to get burned up. Um, the other thing is, you know, our diets and, and our, you know, we've compromised our health with our lifestyles. All of us have. And uh, we're just trying to get ourselves back into a state of health and, and, and out of disrepair. And, uh, you know, so, you know, getting that feel-good feeling from the sun and that positive mood, I mean as much as we can uh, again we just really want to drive home the point that sunlight is a nutrient not just for us physically and mentally but for what we need to survive which is which is from plants they provide the carbs we need and the oxygen we need so don't demonize the sun please please don't lather yourself up with all this unregulated toxic garbage um, that's going to clog your your pores block the necessary uh, benefits of the sun you know just be sensible about it wear a hat sit in the shade um, you know be wise and, um, you know, look, if, you, if you're going to be out fishing and there's no way to avoid it and, you know, whatever, and you need some sunblock, fine. There are plenty out there. I'm going to give you guys a list of, of safer um, sunblocks and sun lotions that you can use that don't have a lot of the harmful chemicals in them uh, that you can have on hand. I, I, have, I have one myself. There are times I like to ride motorcycles. I go on long rides, and sometimes I just can't help it. I, I wear long sleeves even when it's really hot, but you know, invariably I'm exposed. So I put a little bit of sunblock on because I just can't avoid some of that exposure in the peak part of the day if I'm if I'm doing an all day ride. So yeah, I get it. There's practical usage for it. Let's make sure it's of high quality and that it's not all the time, just like everything else. You know, uh, I, I, I hate to use the word moderation too much because a lot of times for me personally in my history, the word moderation uh, I use as an excuse to not do enough and, and, and doing good is always Always the enemy of the best but being sensible and being like practical about these things uh, can really help us be healthy we don't want to block exposure to the Sun I can't emphasize that enough we've known about this for thousands and thousands of years the worship the importance the reverence that we've had for the Sun since since mankind was created and how knowing that that when that Sun rose it was a new day and it was the provider of life uh, and they didn't know how the, the sun and the moon worked then. They just thought it was, there was a God of the sun that, you know, and uh, how wonderful is that? You know, it's just a, it's just a great spiritual uh, way to think about the sun and the, the, the giver of life. So let's not, uh, again, demonize it. Uh, let's learn to enjoy it and reap its benefits and feel and expose ourselves to it. So that's the challenge, um, you know, to, to just rethink our attitude towards the sun. If we have that attitude and, um, uh, and enjoy its benefits and its nutrients, um, and, uh, and yeah, fun in the sun. So that's today's topic. It's always fun talking about sunlight, especially as the leaves are turning and it's getting chillier. But uh, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll be back tomorrow. Ready?